On this episode of Game... <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That show's canceled. But NSFW isn't, because we have Romney Malko. He talks about his new film, Think Like a Man. We talk about the love guru and everything else possibly under the sun. Also, we talk about our canceled show, Game On. Oh, did I bring up Game On again? That's so Game On of me. Oh, God, you're out, Why y'all, you Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW, episode 122, recorded on April 9th, 2012, The Belt Guru. This episode of NSFW show is brought to you by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker who needs stock video clips, photos, illustrations, music tracks, or sound effects, check out Pond5 for instant downloads at the best prices anywhere. Check out Pond5 at Pond5.com. For 25% off this month, use code TWIT25. Here we go. What are those? Okay, okay. For NSFW, the new show full of win, the new sauce for the Webernets, the show that is nominally safe for work. As always, I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, joined as I am 100% of the time, for there would be no NSFW. He puts the JRY in the NSFW. It's <laughs> Justin Robert Young. What's going on, Professor Jury? Oh, before, I'll tell you what, there ain't nothing going on but a pile of biscuits and awesome for this show that you are about to see. Ladies and gentlemen, I I will spare no hullabaloo and nonsense before we get to the introduction of our guest tonight. Uh, We're recording on a strange day at a strange time, and we don't just move our caravan for anybody. No, it's got to be. Easily one of uh, the coolest people that we've ever met. He is the star of Think Like a Man, coming to theaters, a theater near you. Folks, Romney Malko's here. For the first time ever, Romney Malko joining us on the NSFW show. Folks, Romney Malko's here. That's right, I am, and I'm happy to be here, man. You know, (laughs) you guys, um, we we have a little bit of history now, and it's, you know, and um, I'm, I'm, you know, what can I tell you? you? You guys... Gave Tijuana Jazz his home. You really launched him really well via the internet. Now he's like interviewing liberties, and I kind of owe that all. all I owe it all to this show, dude. Uh, I'll tell you what. If you if you happen to talk to to Tijuana Jackson, let him know. Thank you so much for coming on, and thank you for for hooking us up with him because uh, easily one of our favorite he's, episodes. Uh, legendary, a legendary oh. guest, and 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 not only uh, a bit of a potty mouth. Uh, Tijuana was he. Uh, you know, he's he's a rough and tumble character. He's uh he's an interesting cat. You know, <laughs> interesting cat. And I'll go. With, I agree with you on that. So what's going on tonight? You guys obviously have a lot of news. Yeah, and I need to catch up. I want. Back into the loop. Okay, okay, yeah. So I guess I guess some of the things we're, we're definitely going to talk about your new movie. We want to know what's up with your whirlwind tour. You're traveling all over the place. You said it's one of the most ambitious PR vehicles that you've participated in. We've got a bit of news ourselves. You may remember that you uh, showed up on a little show that Justin and I were working on called uh, Game On, and you were nice enough to play um, uh, draw something. Uh, Love draw something. something. Yeah. It was awesome. Well, cause, cause what, we, what we wanted to do is, is we had draw something, which was at that point that week, it was blowing up. Like literally it went from like, it was funny to us because we didn't even, we, the people who did draw something at OMG pop liked game on. Like they were emailing Brian and Veronica when it was sitting on the, in the app store collecting dust right before it absolutely exploded. And then it blew up and we luckily enough, were able to get an interview, but I'm like, I would like to do a segment 
but I don't want to do like a sketch about it. Let's just do something where maybe we have like a celebrity draw something kind of thing. And the only person that I could think of that would be cool enough to to get the concept and certainly would bring that glare of awesome celebrity because you know you're so recognizable from weeds and 40 year old virgin and and no ordinary family and and the good wife and everything was was Romney Malcolm. I mean, I, I think it, it's it, it's easy to say you are probably the most famous person who knows that this show exists. <laughs> I don't think that, that that that's much of a know. race, but you win. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I, I, I will tell you, though, that, you know, seriously, I am, you know, I champion entrepreneurship, for one. And I like independence and I like the idea of, of, of you know, protecting art and the voice. And I just feel like this is the best way to go. You know, not, ha- you know, having your own show, being able to be- crowdsource, build your own audience. I don't know. I just feel, feel as if it's the right path to be on. So. When I, I actually feel fortunate to be included in the show, and I really did have a good time on on um, what was it um, Game On? When yeah, you played yeah. draw something, and Veronica beat the shit out of me in front of like five thousand people. <laughs> yes, that was yes. Fun. Well, I'll tell you, that's one of the uh, in the the internet is a is an, a different kind of animal in that they don't they don't just cotton to whatever's shoved down their throats. You know, they uh, they need to see engagement they need to see humility they need to see people uh being genuinely fun and interesting and interacting with them there's an expectation on the web that if they th- that you can interact with the stars in a way that's totally not possible in any of the old media whether it's movie television or even radio you just have no expectation right. of that but but i think you respond to it really well in that you do I, people are and i've been on i've been on skype with you doing meetings and then your phone rings and people are perpetually freaked out that you answer the phone you give that you give out your cell phone number left and right and answer the and answer the phone man it's like yeah. how, do you know anyone else in hollywood who does that i have you know i don't know i have you know i got a google number and i was able to forward it to my cell phone and i can get text messages on it so like i go all out i, I don't see any point in you know and in, 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 i really want to i want to eliminate that divide you know what i mean for a couple of reasons it really gets on my nerves whenever i look at my freaking nieces and nephews and they look at celebrities as if they're royalty I'm like, fuck yeah. that. Yeah. Hey, royalty? Oh, excuse my language. Yeah. Oh, I forgot no, this. Okay. Dog like, bonnets? You know, so, so I, 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 you know, I believe that when you have that divide and you look at that person as being so much better or beyond you, then it kind of it takes away from your, your, your ability to become just as good, if not better, at what that person does. You know what I mean? Right. And so I don't ever want you to look at that person like, oh, that person's a god and I'm just little, I'm just mortal. You know, I'm fucking, damn, I'm cursing a lot. Anyway. <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, by the way, by the so, way, uh, we're we're setting the official over and under at five and a half. So, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, please right. get your action right. in on the Romney five and a half. You, over you can under. see that. Yeah, I don't know if you see the chat room is freaking out because they actually play side bets right before every episode, trying to figure out who's going to accidentally cursed. And so far, so far, you've you've run away with it. But uh, so here's here's what I like about, uh, and I think you're right about the importance of that interaction between you know these these gods of Olympus versus you know the average Joes. Uh, what happens is is the legend becomes. Big Bigger than the person and the the truth gets perverted along the way. And as a result, if you have somebody who aspires to be, you know, I want to be an actor someday or I want to do this, I want to do that. And all they hear about are these BS success stories of, you know, this person killed it on this, this, this interview or this, this audition. Yeah. Like everybody's, I mean, like Romney, I mean, you, you live and work in LA and you've been involved in show business for a very long time and you uh, at, well, at some point, you realize when you are involved. I mean, and I've only been limitedly involved in in television. But everyone's story is fake. You know, every yeah. every story that everybody tells in LA is completely fake. And then you get to know them a little better, and it's like it's like, oh yeah, because like, like they'll tell the story of like, well, I was twelve, and you know, I started doing some job that you know a twenty five year old should have, and I've been continuing to do that. And that to say, there's not ambitious people. It's just all. Like it's all puffed up and they just edit like it's like a movie. It's like they just edit all the bad parts. It is. But, you know, I'm going to throw something out there. Like only in this country does this happen. Um, Just recently, I was uh, a couple days ago. We did the Wendy Williams show. And when Wendy asked Regina Hall to describe the cast and when she described me, she said that I was complex. And the reason is because I've been touring with this cast for this movie. Think like a man. Yeah. Um, No, no, no. Who who, just so people know uh, what, what is what is the cast? Who's who's traveling with you? Okay, I'm, I'm going to see if I can spell it out. If you've seen 40-Year-Old Virgin, 
there was a guy that I was arguing with named Kevin Hart. So I would be like, you know, I was like, you're looking for a nigga here now. You know, don't yeah. touch me. Oh, I didn't touch you. I just touched your nigga tie. If anybody yeah. remembers that scene, give now, me a one sign of the funniest in the chat scenes, room so I know. One of the funniest scenes of the last decade. I, I, will, I will say this. The first time that I met you was at South by Southwest. And okay. uh, we were recording. We were live streaming. And I remember, I remember yeah, yeah. Like, the only thing I could I, say to you was just that scene was one of the funniest scenes and i i love comedy i consider myself like a, a comedy guy it was one of the just you and kevin hart playing against each other was just the energy was just so awesome it was just, it, it was like a 45 second bomb of energy that i just I, I was so in love with thank you yeah and it was all uncomfortable and all this stuff and and like that guy his name is kevin hart um and he, he's in the movie um let's see if you can it Anybody know who Gabrielle Union is? Gabrielle Union is in the movie. She might yeah. be one of the hottest chicks in the game. I saw uh, her, you know, I, I saw her every day for like two weeks straight. And I have to tell you that I was perving out a little bit, you know. <laughs> don't let don't that. let Dwayne hear that. Dude, I know. I I met Dwayne and like I don't know. It was I, I, I all I could tell you is after hanging out with Gabrielle for a while and really checking out how she gets down. She's one of the coolest chicks I think I've met in the business. And I say that because like when we were at an after party, nobody knew who my brother was, but I had my, my brother had flown in for the premiere. And Gabrielle and my brother are in this intense conversation. And I roll up and I'm like, what's up? And I'm like, oh, this is my, you met my brother. He said, she's like, what? This is your brother? She had no clue who he was. She was just that cool, just chatting it up. A lot of times people kind of like create that divide between themselves and the people who are not necessarily in the business. And she's not well, that kind of person the, at all. The, the, the thing I like the most about Gabrielle Union, cause I'm from South Florida. So I get all the heat games locally. I try to follow the heat and uh, yeah. you, you just always like, there's probably once every three games. If it's, if it's at home and she's there, she'll be like up on her feet, barking at the refs. Like you just, you always, you always got to love it when, <laughs> when, uh, when, when the celebrity starts, uh, you know, getting in the refs here on, on some, uh, you know, ticky tacky foul call in the second quarter. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, like, I listened to her argue with our producer, Will Packer, about sports, and I was just like, such, I became such a female in that moment, like a typical <laughs> female, because them, they was going at it like two dudes, and I, it, you know, it, it, there's something really cool about that, to have that quality, to being able to argue sports, in such, and okay, who knows Turtle, Jerry Farrar, from, from Entourage, he's oh, in this sure. movie. Yeah, all well, fantastic. Or really, ha half a turtle. Compared to where was, it was in the first season of Entourage, Jesus Christ. Oh, has he lost a lot of weight? Yeah. Oh, he really has. You're right, half a turtle. Actually, he can see, he can actually observe himself urinate now, which is cool because he seems to <laughs> It's not now a magic not trick not. every time he does it now. He's like, oh, well, that's how that works. So uh, no, ju no. just real quick uh, to, to – uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to name a few more names. Go and ahead. then I was going to say – if you if the people in the chat room can list the names that I've mentioned who are in this movie and the name of the movie, the names that I mention, I will I will pick someone. I'll give someone a follow and, and like ample amount of retweets. Man, I'm like, half tempted. Up, like, I, I, I see that's not mischievous okay. enough for the chat realm. I'm half tempted to to have turn them loose and to start telling lies about what you're saying on the show about your co-stars and then and yeah. scream at them on Twitter. Just so we can get all your close stars well, to tune I'll, I'll, in. I'll, how about this? How about uh, uh, Romney? Go ahead and, and name a few more of your co stars, and here's the game. You just need to get at replied by one of the co stars of Romney for Think Like a Man. There you go. And and whoever does it first, it's a huge cast. Then you get you get the follow if you're the first one. You got lots of people. That's, uh, this is not going to end well for you, I hope. <laughs> oh, uh, this is not cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see um, Neshcom got. Got it pretty tight there. Neshcom, Gabriel, put Kevin Hart, Gabriel Union, Jay Farrar. Think like a man. Yeah. So okay, you guys get it. Oh, damn it. Okay. So what well, what are we doing? We doing the at reply? Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Look, they're just gonna start. They're gonna start harassing them all over Twitter. We'll see if we can get any of them to respond. No, keep it clean. I mean, like you don't want to just. I mean, because you're not gonna get an at reply if you insult them. Yeah. You have to ask them a question. I mean, the 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 game here is to oh, engage no. them enough for them to at reply. Right. Yeah, like like so I'm going to give you clues that you can ask them. How about that? There we go. Here, oh, there oh. we go. Hey, bingo. This is oh, this buddy. is perfect. All right, so Ronnie, so this is why you're great on this show because there's an energy <laughs> here and I'm feeling it. We're we're running the three man weave right now. This is good. We're bringing back we're bringing back game on too. We're bring, it's all coming together. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, by the way, we've gone on this gigantic circle. Here's the spoiler alert, kids. Game on got canceled. Right. So you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's well, so um, it, it, well, yeah. Speaking of which, and I don't know why uh, we, we got off on this on this tangent, which I suspect we're going to do a lot of in this conversation, but um, uh, we were talking about what's great about you interacting with people on Twitter and, and on the phone is that it keeps the, uh, the failure part of uh, in, in the narrative, it keeps it honest. It keeps it real. Like one of my favorite presentations I ever saw was was um, uh, Adam Savage from the MythBusters spent an yeah. hour. His whole presentation was nothing but talking about everything that every epic failure he's had in his career leading up to MythBusters, and it was so inspiring to me because it made him a real person. And it's like. I want to have those failures. I can see myself getting harassed by by the police in this situation, or and so on and so on and so on. So, oh, no, exactly. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you got it. Yeah, run with it. No, but that's the whole thing. So I was, we were on Wendy Williams the other day, and Wendy Williams says, "How do you describe Kevin? How do you describe Romney?" And when she described me, she literally said, "Romney's complex." And what happens is, is that we've been doing all we've been doing all these shows together, and every time I'll give like. This what they will what they would call a really profound answer, but then I'd follow it up with the most crass and insulting, you know, rebuttal to my own answer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the reason yeah. I do that is because I've noticed in this country only, we have a tendency to make people, especially celebrities and athletes, into either or. You're either the saint or the heathen. You know what I mean? And so I make sure to 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 bust that myth by straight up making it clear. Yes, I'm a gentleman, and I believe in abstaining before hooking up. But at the same time, after I hit it, I might not be interested anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, 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 and I do it all the time because I will never give you the opportunity to put me in a box. If you catch me in a bathroom with Paris Hilton, hey, I told you that it might happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, and if good. you do get caught in a box, you might not be back. <laughs> it really <laughs> depends on the box. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, okay. So, so uh, what, what's the first little tidbit that we can we can give chat room to uh, to start running around with? Okay, here's the first little tidbit. Um, uh, Megan Good, who is fine as hell, <laughs> she she would eat something right before our makeout scenes. Ask her what it is that she used to eat at Megan Good. Let me see if I can type it in the chat room. It's at <laughs> and no, no. Uh, of course, Think Like a Man is about uh, a group of guys and a group of girls and, and the romantic interactions between them. It's based on the Steve Harvey, or it's an adaptation of the Steve Harvey book, right? Exactly, yeah. Let, let me jump in there. Okay, listen, listen. I, I, I'm going to lay it out and be really cool. Look, a lot of times when you, uh, you know, you know when, when you, when, a, a lot of people associate this book, this style or whatever you want to call it, you know, with a lot of the like kind of corny, um, predictable, uh, kind of like the buffoonery that's sometimes associated with these types of rom-coms and yes. i just want to make let's it say maybe and and i don't want to say his name because i certainly wouldn't want you to be precluded from being cast in one of his films which does very very well but a certain right. director is kind of known for what you've just talked about <laughs> okay well okay well i'm glad that i don't know who you're talking about but i do understand <laughs> that a lot of those films sometimes create this stigma they create this impression and so as a result of that, anytime a black film comes out, people automatically assume that that's what this is. First of all, just because there's more than one black person in the movie, America, it doesn't make it a black film. That's the first thing I want to say. Yeah, Second so you hear that chat room? Y'all's racist. Shame you on know, you. Yeah, and then no, ain't nobody racist. And then the other thing is, is that I wouldn't be involved. I just wouldn't be involved if I didn't think it was a straight up story. Look at my resume. I haven't done a whole bunch of shit. I've only no. done the things that I... I really, really believed in. And um, my point is basically being this movie is badass and it's funny as hell. And I and and one of the things was I had a lot of makeout scenes with Megan and I would literally text her on the weekends and I'd be like, Megan, Monday we gotta do some serious making out. What do you say I come over to your crib and we rehearse? <laughs> How did that go over? She'd never respond to that. <laughs> but then come Monday, she'd eat something in particular before our makeout scenes go ask her what that is see if she'll tell you yeah see let's get let's remember. let's see if we can get megan uh who knows if megan's up uh you know at, at this hour but we certainly because of her cell phone just exploded uh, well she's in she, she, she's in she's in la it's so it's it's like literally it's you know 
it's um it's it's nine o'clock, right? Yeah, no, it's plenty early. We we got we got a full hour till uh, till we'll exactly. feel bad about it. Not that we wouldn't do it, but we just feel bad about it. So uh, okay, so tell me about this giant PR tour that you're doing because you it sounded like you said that the last time you were this busy was when you were doing music. I mean, not yeah, that you're exactly. not doing music now, but there's a new. I don't know. Are there any? Let me take a look at the chat room really quick. Um, sorry, give me one second. I just want to let people in on Facebook give them a, a clear link to how to get here. Sure, sure, sure. Um, here, meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm gonna I'm gonna gossip with Justin. Hey, Justin. Hey, re- Brian. Remember Game On? <laughs> <laughs> that show was awesome. Uh, we God. should we should All tell. Right. Th- th- there's probably you know I don't know maybe a third of the audience who has no idea what actually happened. Okay, uh, so here's what happened, guys. Uh, about the. Four or five months ago, we were all hired in various succession between me and uh, Veronica and Brian to do a video game show. We did it for a bunch of weeks. We talked about it a lot on this show. And then eventually, uh, you know, there was uh, wait, 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 a We don't problem. need an origin story. <laughs> for, you don't have to start like at the very beginning. Well, I mean, here, I, I, here we go. Uh, here's well, here's skip to the end. You go we ahead. got canceled because we I'm didn't scoring. have enough advertisements and we didn't have enough viewers to attract the advertisers that we needed to keep the show uh, afloat because it was a more expensive show. Brian got flown out every week. Uh, you know, we were paying, uh, you know, uh, good wages, you know, to do a good higher quality show. Uh, and right before we're about to go live for the final episode, we are told or Leo tweets out that mm-hmm. if the show gets 50,000 views for this final episode he'll bring it back now I, now that was such a weird thing for i i don't know if he i mean i mean he's leo man he might he might just do it he could just wave the success wand and then and then we're back in but i'll tell you what man the freaking internet is rallying like people who I had no idea were watching the show are 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 saying oh man you know cancel before it's time uh it, it got it hit number one in canada uh, of all podcasts full stop on itunes hit number two in the united states number one video podcast and i uh, best of all, I went and there are five pages in just on April 9th of nothing but five star reviews praising the show and saying well, great things and, about it. And, you know, number, we were the number one podcast in all of Canada today. We we're the number four podcast in all of iTunes today. We we're the number one video podcast for all of iTunes today. Uh, and that's all fan support of people who want to save the show and and uh you know took leo seriously when he said uh to do the 50,000 thing which he he then reiterated that he would do it i mean if if it hit 50,000 for this episode for people who are asking in the chat room and apparently they've been in the twit chat room all day pestering literally every host who has no idea what the hell happened that game on was a thing what leo tweeted apparently they've all i know is that i tuned into to tech news today today and uh, Tom Merritt started the show. And as soon as he got onto the pre-show, he said, listen, I'm only going to say this once. I don't know how many views Game On has so far. <laughs> I don't know how far away they are from 50,000. And I won't know. And and it, we probably nobody will know until tomorrow because all the, all the views are coming in today. So I won't respond to anything else because i don't know nobody right. knows so now, <laughs> uh and and we don't either so uh having said that though we'll... uh you know if you watch the youtube video that will update then you can watch those numbers rise you can watch those and if you want to watch the video several thousand times <laughs> <laughs> hang on let me actually i'm gonna actually take a look here and see if uh, uh only 502 views not so hot well, you know, there we go. I guess it's just it. <laughs> I, guess, know, I guess I guess they did. didn't love it enough. <laughs> I guess, uh, hey, look, it's seen on Nitrix. Yeah, crazy. look at that. That's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, we do want to say, I guess we should give a little bit of a eulogy here. We, we do want to say, number one, thank you to everybody who contributed uh blender mf working on the 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 subreddit t2t2 uh you know zach holder for creating the music um it's uh, you have no idea how happy we were with the project, especially the last five episodes. We it, it's um, it, it, Romney. I, I I don't want you to name names here, but but the nature of being an actor means you go from project to project. And some of them you have a good feeling about, like it's obvious you have a very good feeling about think like a man going into it and you're excited to see it released. Do you think it can really soar here? Um, and then there's other projects that you sort of, you you smell the compromises early on, and and you suspect aren't aren't going to be your finest uh, project to be associated with it. Um, what what's it like? How do you deal with the fact that that every series has to end sooner or later? Um, you know, 
I, I really have been told over and over again that I am um, unique in the way that I approach the business. And so I just honestly try not to get involved in the projects that I'm not passionate about. I never really think about when it's going to end or when it's going to start or when it's going to end. This is real. This is real talk. I swear to you, in Los Angeles, all the time that I was there up until about six months ago, I lived in a townhouse that cost me $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. I didn't blow, you know, I mean, I traveled and did that kind of stuff. But the long and the short of it is, is that I never really overextended myself financially. I just kind of saved my dough because I always knew I couldn't live in Los Angeles for real. And the long and the short of it is with that low overhead, I had the freedom to do what the F I wanted whenever I wanted. Right. And um, and so I just chose that way. And the fact that these things are going to you know that they're all coming to an end at some point or the other. The key is to understand that they afford you a platform and you just utilize that platform while you're there to the best of your ability. And that in itself is a science, understanding that you're on something that may last a season, that may last a season and a half or may last six episodes. How do I maximize this? And there are ways where you can say, like, for instance, you know, I've been on The Good Wife for three episodes and I've got two more episodes to go. And everywhere that I go, all people are telling me is, oh, man, it's so awesome that you're on The Good Wife. I'm like, that show has 22 friggin' season, 22 episodes. I'm on five of the 22. And that's all everybody wants to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now, you know, of course, think like a man. So there's this way you can leverage the association of one project in, into, you know, more opportunities. Well, and it's one of those things where it's just uh, I, I think about everything as a, as a lottery ticket, only you, you don't know when they're going to pay off or how they're going to pay off. You know, obviously, what's a, what's a tragedy at one point ends up being the best. You know, and we keep making the parallels to Firefly because they had 14 episodes and we had 14 episodes. Um, but uh, but obviously, after the fact, after it was dead and gone, people discovered it and they're like, oh, I love this. Why? Why did this ever get canceled? And, and who knows what can happen? But I'll tell you what, man, uh, it it. It's way cool to go out on top the the way we are, you know, hitting the hitting the yeah. top of the charts of iTunes and having so many people and have having, you know, these five, six episodes in a row that from beginning to end, we're super, super proud of. Uh, I, I, I just want to thank everybody who gave us a chance over oh, at Twitter. No, thank, thank you. I mean, uh, listen, uh, game on was us taking chat realm. You know, it was it was us going from. Uh, you know, our our own little carnival and NSFW and really putting it on Broadway with a, you know, a big kind of budget behind it and, and trying to leverage all the awesomeness that comes out of this audience. And you guys really dis- didn't disappoint. And the first thing I said after we got the news last week to Brian was the one thing we are going to learn no matter what comes out of any of this is how Chat Realm handles death. And <laughs> it was amazing to see you guys just absolutely blow a fuse and be like, no, 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 you don't get to take this away from us. Right, right. It's we're like, going, yeah. we're going, you want 50,000 downloads? We're going to give you 100,000 downloads and we're going to blow this thing up to the number one podcast on iTunes. And that's so, that's so amazing. It's just, uh, it, it was so cool to see. So thank you everybody uh, for doing that. And as for what comes next, you know, we will see, but hopefully we'll have information on it going forward, whether or not, we hit 50,000. I want to know whether or not we hit 50,000. So hopefully I know that I will work hard personally to find out what the number is and if we hit it uh, and if if so, how much we surpassed it by. So uh, just, uh, you know, if you want to support it, support it. But thank you guys very much. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Uh, all right. So so uh, I want I want to get another tidbit out of Romney okay. for, for Twitter. Uh-huh. But before we do, we do have to take a short break. We have a brand new sponsor. Oh, my you know, God. It's been forever since this has happened. I know. I know. Uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this, Romney, but one of my favorite things about the podcasting world is that everything's so small that the advertising, it's quaint. It's like it's the 1950s, and we just uh, we just take a moment in the middle of the show to thank the fine folks over at Ovaltine and uh, <laughs> you know, how much we enjoy uh, uh, Geritol. I love Jared Hall. <laughs> yes, it's like it's it's like that. You know, we have we have the Flintstones come out and talk about how awesome it is to smoke cigarettes, and uh, you know we get on with the show. But this is not the Flintstones smoking cigarettes, folks. This is creating your own media. This is you making sure that when you put up your YouTube clip or your podcast or you're making a website, you need pictures or sounds or something that you're not going to get it pulled down by Viacom because you use something that they have the rights to. Pond5 
dot com is where you need to go. They got everything you need. Dude, Video clips. Check this out. Photos, check this out. Illustrations, music tracks, sound effects. Romney, Romney, we're gonna play a game. We're gonna make a movie about something, okay? Um, okay. name name anything that we need B roll, expensive B roll footage. Like uh it's it could be a monster movie, it could be a whatever, but there's gotta be just name anything. Anything a in the setting. Way. We need a setting. I would love to see B roll footage of B roll footage of um Godzilla. Godzilla? See that's I don't know. Well, that's that's, that's a trademark character, but but we'll we'll see what we can look get. at this. Look at this. Godzilla, even though uh, yeah. even though they're like Pond Five is like okay, you don't want actual Godzilla because freaking that's a copyrighted pro. You you can't get away with it. But you know what? Right. We understand what you mean. Way cool. So how about like B roll? Like let's make our own B roll footage of Jurassic Park with our own dinosaurs. No, but this is great though. Like you even even though I typed in Godzilla, it knew it. Yeah. And check this out. Look, look, look. Hold on. Hold up, wait. <laughs> so even though, even though, like it knew, it knew what we were going for. Which, by the way, that's my favorite part of all these sites. And uh, uh, Pond Five is no different because they don't just want a bunch of goons uh, recording the sounds as you play the free samples. So they have to have the overlay like it's a mix, like it's a DJ mixtape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Pond Five. Dot, Pond Five Street Official. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that, yeah, that I really like that. that's dope. So uh, I like that. Here, let's uh, do another one. Here, uh, let's let's do uh, let's do dinosaur. Man, they got to look at uh, here. I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put dinosaur dinosaur, and then um, look at this. What do we got? What is that? You know, you know, you know what would be really funny is that. You know, if we could really find out what dinosaurs actually sounded like, they probably sounded like birds. <laughs> they probably did. Boy, I won't be sincerely yes. disappointed when we get time machines or when we clone dinosaurs and find out that that's the case. Well, you know, we're going to put like a speaker in them, you know, because we won't be able to handle it. It's the same reason why we have to put a camera sound on our digital cameras, even though they don't need it. It's just because we can't handle the fact that it doesn't make a sound. Uh, oh, yo. No, she said they sound like angry birds. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. that. Listen, that's yeah, HD. Or, like, don't li don't listen to it because you can't listen to it. But right now we're watching HD video of an iguana. So right now I could be like, listen, hey, that that uh, Rick Santorum <laughs> sure is an idiot. The only person voting for him is an iguana. And then boom, <laughs> HD video of it. Look at that. That's an iguana voting for Rick Santorum right there. <laughs> oh, that's bomb. I can think of dope ways to incorporate that. I'm sure. Give me a second. I could come with him. I like that. But I just I just say that just added that to my. Uh, the point is, my, uh, the point is, uh, I, I was able to meet with the Pond Five guys over at South by Southwest. They were really really cool, and I talked about what a passionate fan base we have with them. And what I want to do is see if we can work out some kind of uh, some kind of uh, freebies to see if you guys can use some of the assets to make awesome NSFW movies. I told them about the ten second film festival that we did. So do us a favor. Yeah. We, I know that we have media pros out there who want to sp step up their game. Uh, just explore. they want to be street official, like Pond Five. Yes, exactly. So what's what's what code do we have for everyone, well, folks? If you want all of the most legit, listen, the, the Pond Five's names ringing out on the streets for st for stock. Uh, video clips, photos, illustrations, and music tracks. You just need to go to Pond Five dot com and type in Twit Two Five. That is Twit. Two five at checkout, twenty five percent off everything, okay? And that's only for this month. That's only for the month of of April. Just go in there and on at, at Pond Five at checkout, use code oh, Twit twenty five, and and you're gonna get everything you want. Boom! Knock a quarter off that. Hey, uh, and while you're at it, percent off. Why don't you hit up our friends? Go uh, on Twitter. I'm sure it's at Pond Five. I assume. I don't actually don't know, but uh, but hit them up on Twitter and let them know. Uh, thank you for sponsoring the NSFW show. Yeah, well, because they're new. Chat room, they're new. We'd like them to stay around for a while. <laughs> so let's let them know. Oh, my God, everyone's really excited, and we're going to be doing nothing but buying every <laughs> stock video thing on Pond5 immediately. All right. Thank oh, you very much to, to, to Pond5. All right, give, give, us, give us more juice. Give us more uh, material to harass your friends with. Okay, let's, let's go through another one here. Um, uh one of the cast members uh, is involved in an interracial relationship. <laughs> Damn, 
Okay. Is that is this is this shocking news or is it... No, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes, okay? And he the beats other his race wife. is Klingon. Wait, Andy beats got, his wife? What? You gotta got figure out who that one is. Wait. Um, okay, this is not funny. I'm gonna stop that right now. Just, what you know, was snake. that? That was Oh, oh look, look, okay, let, 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 let's move on. I'm sorry. Tijuana Jackson was coming out of me right now. I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> that was worse. You know, something I, I, I was noticing, I have a very tragic sense of humor. It's the worst. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you backpedal from anything ever. I mean, this is amazing. This is yeah. this is Romney Malco <laughs> blushing. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there. That that I, I, I get my I get my you know, the left and right, they just anyway, um okay, let's move on. Um I okay. kinda wanna run with this. Don't do it. Okay. Don't do it. Okay, right. here we All go. Right. Here's another clue, okay? But if, but if you see Dwayne Wade with a black eye. Then... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the mess is going down in clay class in the Miami <laughs> U-Logger room. Okay. All right, y'all. Um, oh, shoot. Uh, Kevin Hart. Here's Here we one for go. Kevin Hart. At then let me type this thing. It's at Kevin Hart for real. Um, for okay, at Kevin Hart for real. That's his thing yeah. right there. Okay. Oh, there and, you go. Got it. You see, can you see it? Yep. Yep. At yep. KB, I'll type it again. For yeah. real. No, no, listen, okay. No, no, I want you to go they, to they Kevin got, Hart for real. All you gotta real. do is say the okay. name once, and they'll find it. Yeah. All yeah. right. And um, let me think. I've got so many on Kevin, I don't even know where to start. But, um, okay. He drove a vintage vehicle to the set of Think Like a Man when we were in Culver City. So ask him, what vintage vehicle did he bring? Did he drive to the set of Think Like a Man? Someone said Kevin Hart has some big ass cabs. <laughs> Does he, in fact, Romney, we asked the hard-hitting questions here on Game On. Does, in fact, Kevin Hart have some big-ass calves? You know, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, he seemed pretty athletic. <laughs> like, you're on set one time, and you just be like, like, you're just kind of scanning the floor, maybe looking for something. Like, you dropped your cell phone, and you're like, oh, God damn it. Is there a, did a horse walk on set, or is that Kevin Justin, Hart in Justin, shorts? I don't know about you, but I will never admit to looking at another man's calves, ever. <laughs> So I don't know. I, I, I would just I plead a fifth on that one. Oh my um, god! Yeah, Kevin Hart. Ask him what was that car? Say what was that car that you you know that 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 you know vintage car that you were driving to the set of, of uh, Think Like a Man. And listen, when you put Think Like a Man and put it like this, and he'll he'll know it's for real. Put it like this: Think like a man. What? Hashtag Think Like oh, a Man. Oh, hashtag Think Like a Man. Yeah, sure, sure. You got it. Yeah, and and, and if you do that. That'll also help with Megan too. Maybe you should ask Megan with the, with the hashtag Think Like a Man. Then they'll know it's legit. <laughs> ask him what car they drove to the set. This dude was balling. Okay, so, dude. Um, uh, what I love. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say was it the Ghostbusters car? I don't know. Kevin Hart. Maybe. I mean, because that would be awesome. Because like, listen. Sure, you can be an actor. Rolls in with you know, uh, uh, you know, some sort of vintage nineteen sixties Rolls Royce or whatever. But if you were on a set in a Ghostbusters car, but you're still you know like banging Little Wayne or something, I think that that that's some next level stuff. Maybe that's what you need to do. Kevin Hart rolls up in in some uh, you know tan and taupe Bentley. You got to roll in in like a DeLorean. So what I love about the chat realm. <laughs> Is that they don't they don't truck in half measures, so it's like uh, you have them pretending to be actual journalists. Cheetos under the CTMZ account saying our sources <laughs> are telling us you drove a strange vehicle or a vintage vehicle. Uh, that's awesome. Come on, no, listen, listen to you, CTMZ. Listen to me. You put hashtag think like a man. Do it over. <laughs> yeah, there you go. How about this? Uh, you, sir, are a dapper chap. Which horseless yeah, carriage <laughs> did ride to the set of your latest moving picture, Think Like a Man? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, I, hope, I hope Bob McMob gets the, uh, gets the answer there. Uh, yeah. Robin, let me, let me ask you this, because we were talking about, uh, you know, projects that, you know, and, and your 
mindset going into it. I, I've there's something that I've just been meaning to to ask you about. And now that we're actually friends, it's not going to seem just like weird that I would bring it up. But like, you did the Love Guru. You were, yes, I did. Yeah, and that was that was a movie where it, it was you know that was right it, after it, Austin it, Powers. Yeah, you know, and like, and Mike Myers is printing money. And then, you know, that comes out not particularly, you know, well-received uh, critically. And, and we haven't seen a whole lot of Mike Myers since. You were coming up 40-Year-Old Virgin. You know, uh, what was, I mean, going into it, what were your expectations? You know, what did you think of the script? And, and what was your reaction to it? Let me go in from the top. I'm going to have to start with chat realm on this one. <laughs> Yo, how honest do you want me to be here? Like, how real do you want me to be about this? Uh, I'm, I, I'm asking the chat realm. Okay. I'm asking the chat. Brian, Justin, let the chat realm answer. Let's are, see. Are, how honest are we supposed to be here? Like, I'm seeing 100% super real, super real, real. Bring it, brother. Okay, go. Okay, boom. Okay, you know what? Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to talk business. Are you sure? I'm going to tell you business. Yep. All right. All right. Let's okay. rock it. Boom. Here we go. First of all, let's repeat the question. Justin? Okay. Love Guru. What? Yes. What was your perception of it going into it when I'm sure you were given the script by your agent? Uh, what did you think about the project considering all the talent that was that was into it? Mike Myers was huge with Austin Powers. And what was your reaction to the critical and financial reception of the film? Bob Colley is like, as real as you can be without ruining your career. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and even that last part's kind of optional with chat realm. They're all like, you know, if now's the time to dive off, I mean, we'd like to watch. Sure. Hey, look, I, I'm going straight up. When I read the script, that movie was funny as hell. It was the script was pure. It was hilarious. It was that Mike Myers humor, but it was funnier and it had like a really cool message. It really was awesome. And then the second thing was I was getting the opportunity to work with someone who had influenced me so much in my career. So being my, I mean, in, in my, you know, growing up, you know, Mike Myers was just a major, major influence, you know, um, Wayne's world, as you know, all the Austin powers. And so, and, and, and even Saturday night live, there was just no way in the world I was going to pass up on the, I would work with, I had now, listen, I've I've worked with Judd Apatow, I've worked with Seth Rogen, I've worked with Steve Martin, uh, Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Will Ferrell. Um, uh, I, you know, I feel like, I, I mean, I'm Mary Louise Parker, um, I can go down the line. I feel like I really keep getting lucky. And there was no way in the world that I was going to walk away from an opportunity to learn from Mike Myers. Sure. And sure. so, and also, the script was great. But here's what happens, and this is what really happened, is... First of all, I think that there were just some some bad seeds involved in the creation of this project, and um, there was a lot of uh, compulsive behavior and micromanaging of artists, and a lot of confusion on the set, and a lot of people getting yelled at, and it really killed the morale of the process. And the director that we hired, I have no idea why he was such an hold of me i mean he was the dude this is no kidding mike myers would make a mistake and the dude would yell at me and really? like yell at me to where like people would have to hold him back wow. and i'm like i i wasn't sure if i honest to god didn't know if i was gonna have to beat this dude's ass and you know <laughs> yeah. and, and and take over so it you was know, that and, tense i didn't i, I do it you should see how aggressive he was towards me. It was the most bizarre thing. And then, mind you, I had, Mike Myers believed that comedy plays very close to camera, so I'd have to keep my face to the camera when he'd do his lines, and he'd do his lines for 14 hours. He'd do them over and over and over because <laughs> he was kind of unsure. But what happens is they're rolling this thing around on these wood plaques, wooden plaques, and it would create this friction, and the camera would shock my face. So it was like torture. I just keep <laughs> trying to give the most earnest reactions like... <laughs> Yes, Master Shock. Can I have another? It felt like some straight up. So, so you're so you're following and just just painting a picture. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you're doing a shot where the camera is moving. Uh, Mike Myers wants you to keep your face as close to the camera as possible. So you're literally got your cheek on the metal and you're exactly. moving along as it dollies across. You know the shot. Yes, and he wants me at the same time. The whole time I'm doing this, he wants me to continue massaging his. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and so you're burying I'm, the so, lead. Go ahead. So yeah, and I'm 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 watching this entire process, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, karmically, the way the people are being treated on this thing, there's something very wrong here. And me and my agents and my family would get on the phone and talk about it, but. I have to tell you that I just think that it was one of those situations where a good project uh, and the people involved just kind of lost their ways, lost their vision because of all the, you know, it was just demeaning. People were just being yelled at and treated like shit. See, it, I got lucky because I got to hang. I got to hang with the. Um, I got to hang with the hockey players. So it was like me and thirty hockey players, and like anytime, you know. Uh, someone would be mean to me. There'd be like thirty hockey players yelling from the ice. Fuck you! Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like having to calm them down. Like, hey, easy, easy, easy. But so, you know, so, so you had you had the hockey player extras chirping at the director who's barking at you because Mike Myers screws up his line. <laughs> No, like what? Ha- exactly, exactly. And they would be like, literally, you'd see five or six of them just come onto the ice and start skating towards the director. Like it was tense. And, yeah. Um, it was because you know I would hang with the hockey players. We would go out. We would we were each other's wingmen. Man, I would take the whole like we had like thirty hockey players. I take them out. To who, dinner. who were you hanging just, with? Huh? Who were you hanging with? What? Which? Uh, which? Which players were you? Were you hanging with? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I got to hang with um. Uh, what's his name? Um, Blake Roberts. Okay. Um. Yeah, and Blake Roberts was he was on the he at the time he was on the Kings. He, okay. he was in LA. Um and then there was a guy named kind of old school guy named Jim Thompson, you know, who who used to play. Okay. But of of the professional players, those are the only two guys that I actually recall that were really pros that were there. And then everybody else was kind of like people who had played, like we had a dude we um we called Chicklets, because he really didn't have a lot of teeth. Sure. <laughs> right? Um and we had my my other dude. Oh, hold on one second. That's my rice cooker. Hold on. <laughs> that was an authentic moment. That was an NSFW moment just then. I am so glad I asked about the love guru. Well, here's what's interesting is you hear and yeah. and, and Ramadi, you you can uh, chime in here. Uh, like a- around the time that uh, that the Christian Bale blow up, you know, leaked with him chewing out that lining guy or stuff. The the yeah. line that kind of went around was like, well, this kind of happens on set a lot, and but it's like it just sounded to me like a poisonous atmosphere that I wouldn't want to be a part of. Well, and this, I mean, and I don't want to, I, I don't know if there's any kind of connection to it, but there has, where after the love guru came out, there was legal issues between Mike Myers and, and one of the studios. And, and that's kind of been some of the reason why you haven't seen a lot of Mike Myers. And if the trade you know, reports are to be believed that, uh, you know, there was, there was friction with, you know, him and people, you know, further up, up the ladder. And, and I don't know whether or not that, bled into the set of the the, the love guru or, or where oh. that came from but oh did they, they threaten to ruin my career and everything like i literally we literally got um we literally got phone calls from the producers um after the everything was over basically saying that they were going to ruin my career and they were going to tell everybody that um i didn't want to uh participate in the promotion of the film and all this other stuff and it, it was it was a really sad and unfortunate um event that kind of it, it ran its course and um i i, I honestly believe is that I, I knew it going in that the added i was already committed but the you know the way people were being treated just just karmically it just didn't seem aligned with what i've experienced in like a hit show or a hit movie you know usually when i'm on a set that i you know like weeds or or 40 year old virgin people are yeah. just treated, yeah. treated really nicely. And then at the same time, to be quite frank, I can't really bash Mike Myers either. You know what I mean? Um, we, hell, we spent Thanksgiving together and he came to my birthday party. You know, it was just, it was just, we just, we just had a bad group of guys on, just, just a bad so, group so of So in your we experience, just, that, that, that idea, that in your experience, it's BS, that idea that like, oh, people blow up and yell a lot at each other and that's just Hollywood. Uh, in your experience, it sounded like you've had a lot of, uh, Essentially positive experiences with the pro with most of the projects, with a couple of exceptions. Well, you know, yeah. Well, you know, for, honestly speaking, like one of the things that we do before I ever take a job is because I'm a sensitive dude, and like I got to be real. Acting is is really secondary to to my you know to my to my existence. Like, don't get me wrong, I love doing it and it's fun, but um, you know, I kind of came into this business owning a business, and as a result of that, I yeah. never really had to work 
to, you know, I never had to act to eat, you know what I mean? Right. So we always vet everyone that's involved in a project before I actually agree to do anything. So if there's anyone on the set or if there are people on the set who are, who have a reputation of being a little, you know, aggressive or whatever, we, we will either usually pass or we will address it right up and be like, you know, what state of mind is this person in? You know, cause I just, I, I'm just being real. Life is too short. I don't, I'm good. What, I'm really what good. percentage of projects do you pass on? Um, I would say that I pass on probably like 98, 97 to 98% of the projects that come my way. Man. Can I, can I yeah. ask you this? There was, it was a really funny, uh, not a, a funny, it was an interesting interview I heard with uh, a director and I, I think it's, his name is Turtle Tau, but he's done a lot of the Disney, the big Disney adve- uh, adventure kind of flicks. Uh, and he used to be the assistant for Gene Wilder. And he was talking about why Gene Wilder doesn't do a lot of movies. And it would be because 90% of the scripts he got were some version of Willy Wonka. And I would assume because you are, you're a black guy with a huge energy, you can, you can play a very engaging character that 90% of the scripts are a, a, parody or you know just a a ridiculous caricature of a loud obnoxious black guy is that 90 percent of the scripts that you pass on um you know what no actually it's it's weird like i never really i rarely i've only had like maybe three jobs in my life where the role was actually written for a brother i don't know chat realm really quick justin justin brian everybody have you heard of a, a a cartoon right now called um unsupervised it's on of effects. course oh yeah no on effects yeah in fact just, you guys finished you guys are are talking about uh, uh is there something we could do can we make season two happen like can we slam dunk that you know what we might be able to if you, you know but i'll tell you what um we we got about three more episodes coming we have three more surprise episodes and i'm telling you right now the things that we get away with on that show particularly <laughs> in these three episodes i don't understand it but anyway that's one of the shows that was written you know, for you know, for a black guy that I played, um, uh, Conrad in Weeds was written for a brother, and the doorman in Think Like a Man was written for a brother. But other than that, um, <clears throat> from what I understand, I haven't really had any other roles that were intended for brothers. It's like, oh wow, um, yeah. So I actually get to come in and kind of like J- Judd Apatow was adamant about that. He was like, please put the damn script down and just say it. You're just say it. You know, right. and. Um, that kind of freed me up, freed me up quite a bit. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and also like you know, really and truly, it's just it's just a matter of having enough confidence to kind of play to play the character the way you want to see it. You know what I mean? And that's that's what's great about um, think like a man, which is one of the reasons that I signed on. It's there's no it it doesn't it's it doesn't you know cater to any particular race. Somebody said college boys. I don't believe that. But it doesn't cater to any particular race. It's just like a universal friggin' story about, like, you know, men being men and women being women and just trying to, you know, one dude's trying to hit it and she's trying to get him to commit to it. And, you know, it's, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say, listen, listen, listen to me, y'all. I wouldn't sell you up a river. Think like a man is the business. All right. I'm almost, All right. I almost want to go out on a moment and say it's almost – I'm going to say think like a man is better than the 40-year-old vagina. What? Nice. What? All right. It's better than the 40-year-old vagina. No, you know what? 40-year-old vagina is pretty good if you've had it. <laughs> I'm going to say it's, it's as good as the 40-year-old vagina. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Sure. Good. All right. Well, there we go. Yep. I mean, and, if, and, and if you have uh... And I'm also as proud of this as I am of the – 40 year old vegan on his top <laughs> this movie as I am of the 40 year old vegan. And I'm going to go out one more and say the last time I felt this good about a movie was the 40 year old virgin, honestly. That's awesome. Uh, oh, listen, oh, I, think, I think it's going, it, it looks like it's going to do uh, gangbusters. Uh, the one thing I got to ask you though is you got to, I mean, listen, you are a man who understands his audience. And you got to yeah. understand that the audience you're talking to now, the top films they want to see this summer are Prometheus and uh, Avengers and, and and Dark Knight. Like this, that's 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 the crowd. Yeah, yeah. All right. So so give me for a genre, science fiction or comic book fan, you know, give 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 them a little tidbit of what they're gonna get out of of, of Think Like a Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe okay. maybe and and feel free to embellish. Like if you want to imply that. All of the main characters are secretly cyborgs, even though they don't really explore that in the plot. 
I no, mean, I think, I, Romney, Romney is, uh, he's, he's brilliant. This man could sell snow to an Eskimo. I think, you know, he's, he's got, he's, he's got an angle planned out. Uh, he could, I, I think he's got it. He can sell chat realm on think like a man. Go All ahead. Right. Okay. Check this out. Now I'm going to be real. A lot of times in relationships, right? What'll happen is we'll come out of a relationship and then we'll think back and we'll be pissed off at the person we broke up with or the person that broke up with us. But 99% of the time, you are responsible for what you got yourself into. You're the reason that you're in the situation that you're in. If you prefer to blame people for your low ratio of, you know, for your low ratio of getting of, 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 of successful relationships or your low ratio of happiness in relationships, you really, if, if you're content with that and you want to continue to blame people, don't, don't, don't mess with the movie. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you want to learn game, if you want to truthfully learn game. Right. And how to maximize. And I don't know if I'm going to get the belt for this, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. anyway. (laughs) Right. How to maximize your. They're belting me already. (laughs) They're they're, they're already they're on the fingers (laughs) on the trigger. Damn it. Okay. All right, Matt. All right, Matt. Matt Wakeford was like, belt. Okay. Okay. Here's the deal. Um, yo, seriously speaking, I'm not kidding you. If the one thing you will walk away with, you will walk away with a lifestyle when you see this movie, meaning you will have a whole new approach to the way in which you go about obtaining that queef heart. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> no belt, no belt. Was, I didn't was that the one with the dragon queef heart? <laughs> the queef heart, you know, you know, the queef heart, you know. It's like that where, where Sean Connery was the dra- voice of the dragon? Is that queef heart? <laughs> Braveheart. What is what? Is, what song is the Dragon Heart? Oh no, it's the Mel Gibson movie with the. <laughs> you can take our queefs, but you can't take our freedom. <laughs> <laughs> People, no, that's it. That's it. If you want to increase your ratio, go for broke. If you don't want to increase your ratio, don't watch it. Yeah, you stay mean, stay at home, which is all you alone, where you're gonna exactly. die alone and sad. And absolutely, and, and like I'm saying, I want to go see Avengers. I want to go see Avengers too. But let me tell you something. I don't want to go see Avengers alone. You know. Oh I'm just, there's one no! Thing that now you sold it. This is you watch this movie this month, and you've got a whole lifestyle so that you're set on the big holiday yeah. weekend, and you have a date. See this you movie, have, you and you will game. have a date for the Avengers. That is the listen. game to bring a lady to the Avengers. Hey, listen, every Hawkeye needs a uh scarlet witch you know you need to go ahead and bring sounds like a really event. dirty metaphor <laughs> like <laughs> come on baby every hot guy needs a scarlet witch just just yeah, listen listen you guys think i'm kidding you know good and well i want you to look around and i want you to really really think about it me and kevin hart are the dudes that bring it and when i say bring it when you actually walk away from the movie or from the show with things you can actually apply and use in your day to day, you know, in your day to day hunt. You get well, what I'm yeah, saying? And I guess, and I guess that know. makes sense because, of course, the book the book was all about that. I mean, the book was was very much a how to guide. Right, but I read the book and it was kind of written for women. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in this weird way, it kind of tells you if you if you read it the way that I read it, it just it kind of like. You know, it kind of gave you insights to like, oh, wow, that's what men do. OK, well, I don't feel so bad doing it anymore. <laughs> but I just got through talking to a guy named Charlemagne over at 105. And Charlemagne was like, dude, it showed me all the things that women fall for. I was like, oh, that is- <laughs> <laughs> he was right. Does. It kind of shows you like, oh, wow. So I'm just throwing it out there. I'm like, yo, if you know, look, man, if you if you got a sweet tooth like me, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'm like, looking at you know, I'm looking like, in the, the chat room. Chimera's oh got a uh <laughs> Lions in the chat room. Number one. All right, I'm sorry, Robbie. I have to just put uh put uh, say this. Kuan says, uh Hawkeye was married to Mockingbird, Jury, not Scarlet Witch. And also Chimera in the chat room. Step one, go to movie. Step two, manage your own pussy warehouse. <laughs> Oh, look, you know, virtue, you know, Charlemagne, Mockingbird jury. I saw that pop up. I was like, what the hell? (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, All right. Well, when does Think Like a Man come out? Let's get all the details on that. 
Okay, guys, I'm not kidding you. This okay, April 20th is when this joint drops. This is gonna be. I'm telling y'all right now. This is gonna be one of them 40 year old virgin joints. I'm just being real. Dude, it's one of them joints. Still, and, speaking and, of joints, yeah, yeah. considering your release date. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, okay, so you realize, you realize, but you got to figure out some way to tie this in with the Coney 2012 campaign because that's their well, big. I'm not doing it. I've been doing it for two weeks, bro. Hold up, let me tell you something. This is how I know that our numbers are going to bang this weekend because everybody's going to get faded. They're going to go see the movie. They're going to leave the movie and forget what the hell they saw and have to go buy a second ticket to go see the movie again on Sunday on on Saturday. That's how I know it's going to blow up. This is brilliant. This is, this is and listen. And my, I want my whole weeds following to salute by smoking in the car. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> well, why not? It's it's practically Listen, legal. I'm just going to say, okay. if you do hot box before you see Think Like a Man opening April 20th, then, you know, uh, I, I think you're going to have a different experience than anybody else. And you can go see it again and experience it again for the first time. Uh, let me just say one thing about this cast and this movie. Uh I've, if you look back at the history of awesome comedies, there is a great tradition of just putting a bunch of great people in a room and letting them play off each other and be amazing and bombastic and charismatic. You've seen that with Caddyshack. You've seen that with a lot of the Judd Apatow movies. That's yeah. the idea is just put just a ton of talent in a room and let them be hilarious together. And I look at that cast and with guys like you and, and Kevin Hart and you know Taji P. Henderson, who is amazing uh, in – Hustle and flow and so many other things. You guys just got yes. wall to wall talent in that movie, and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. I'm pumped to go see it. Hey man, thank you. I'm telling you right now, like all kidding aside, I don't know why this. Oh oh, I gotta share this with you guys really quick. Okay okay, let me just talk about something really quick because I think it's very important. All right? Yeah. Check this out. So we get this email today from our producers. Damn, I'm just giving y'all all the behind the scenes. This is food. what we love, man. People love – that's what people love about NSFW well, because, show. You know, I mean, Ronnie's going to come on the NSFW show. He's not going to pussyfoot around. He's not going to give us the publicist speak. He's going to you know, drop some real bombs of knowledge here. He's running no, it, it, it's real. And one of the things that was in the email that really caught my attention was uh, the producer was like, yo. He's like, look at this. We're at this place now where our movie has – now earn the awareness that through social media we have earned the awareness of movies ten times our size. So we made our our movie for like ten million dollars. Holy I crap! Got really? You know what? I, With that cast, what'd you guys get paid? Fourteen dollars sure. and an Arby's gift I, certificate? <laughs> I, I know exactly. I could be wrong about that, so maybe I should I should recant that statement. I think we made it for fifteen dollars. Fifteen fifteen pesos. Yeah. yeah. No, Holy literally crap. we made it for like fifteen dollars. Okay, um, no, how much did we make this movie for? Did we make it for ten? Okay, okay, I want to say we made it for ten. I could be wrong, but the long and the short of it is this: we we have earned that they track the awareness of a movie. There's this process that they have, and like if you get a three or a four, you're doing damn good. Like a three or four is like that's probably going to well, be well. That, that's what movie. yeah they do they do all tracking stuff and that's how everybody knew that uh, John Carter was going to be a complete bomb. Yeah, because nobody they had no penetration. Out. Nobody knew what the heck a John Carter yeah, was. They didn't know what it was, what was happening in it, why they would want to go see it, and and when they were asked what they what it was, they just the people that were calling they're like I don't know who you are. Get off the phone. And they throw it at the wall. <laughs> John Carter yeah, doesn't yeah. live here anymore. <laughs> no, absolutely, exactly it's the same. You know, I mean. It's the same thing. Like, we're so high. We're so beyond four. It's ridiculous. But in the email, you know, from the producers, they were like, and we owe this to your social networking. Like, me and this cast uh, have just band together, and we've been putting out videos almost like every other day of, of what we've, you know, of things. Like, for instance, Tijuana Jackson interviewed the men from Think Like a Man. Oh, that's Talk great. Now, now, here's what's crazy. They knew they were going to be interviewed, but they didn't know what question TJ was going to ask. And everybody else in the room who was working behind the scenes had no idea who TJ was. They were literally standing behind me thinking I was TJ saying this to the cast. 
They had no clue. It was the and most. For, for audio listeners, he was mouthing, "Do you want me to get rid of him?" Like it, the, the angry, <laughs> frightened publicist <laughs> was like, "Yeah, get this guy out of here." Hey, and and actually, he, you, you you bring up a really good point. Do you find that uh, that that studios are are trusting? They're understanding that the actors with social media have to be brand managers because uh, there were projects just three years ago, like when I did Universal uh, Halloween Horror, Horror Nights. Everything was tightly regimented. Like, you don't talk to the press. You don't do this. We have people who handle all this. We manage the brand. We manage the messaging, blah, 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 blah. The next year or two years later, uh, when I uh, when I came back, uh, they're all like, uh, yes, please tweet. And if you want to do behind the scenes stuff, just make sure, you know, w- let so-and-so know you're doing X, Y, or Z. Like, do you, do you see more of that now? Like, do they acknowledge that social media puts more of the power of the movie in your hands? Think about it. Just take a moment, work through it. Man, that's stoic look from Rami. <laughs> I, I didn't mean I didn't mean to freak him out. Um, yeah, I don't. I think he's pissed off. Oh, I knew I I knew I overstepped our bounds. <laughs> he's like, all right, listen, Justin, you brought up probably the biggest flop of my career on air without prepping me, and that's fine. But Brian saying. Whatever you just said. Uh, <laughs> Brian saying some horse crap about managing a brand. I don't even know you asses. Click. I'm out of here. <laughs> well, that was a really good time. Make sure to go see uh, Think Like a Man. <laughs> I'm out. so glad it comes out on 420 because I'll remember when it is, you know, because if it was just some random day, I would not remember it. But, uh, well, hopefully we'll get Romney back. But uh, I guess we should probably not. start wrapping things up now anyway, right? Yeah, we're, we're uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we forgot to mention follow follow Veronica. I, I assume you already follow me. If you want to know whatever happens to the future of Game On, and feel free to go out there and continue to blow up that episode because uh, you already made one of our dreams come through true. Uh, you know, going out as the number one podcast, and now uh, if we could just have massive numbers as well, then I would like to hang a big bloated, fat, pulsating episode of Game On <laughs> as as the last thing. Just just know this: that every month Twit has a sheet. That tracks all the downloads that come that, that come in, and they put it in bar graph form. And I would just really be delighted if, uh, and just just to show that that you know there there's an audience. And I don't blame. I mean, listen, the show wouldn't have existed unless Twit gave us a chance. This yeah, no, not- and we should in the list of people we should thank. We again have to thank uh, Leo. Leo Laporte was the one who took a, a big big gamble on us and and wanted to go the high production route. And I think we all well, and, and let me something. also just real quick. Let me just say this. They took a massive, they did it 100% right. They paid everybody like it was TV. They paid me to write, which is something that they probably could have coaxed me into doing for free. <laughs> they uh, had Brian, you know, uh, you know, fly out. They make sure that they were there, you know, at, at the same time. They paid Veronica what she is worth, all right? I've seen a lot of people say, and I don't know where this came from, that Veronica was expensive. Veronica was not expensive. Veronica cost that much money because she is worth it she is a goddamn supernova the the fact that she's still doing podcasts is amazing yeah because she should be on television she has got television talent and television she's very smart that's what she is she's extremely smart and she 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 understands her market and unfortunately she's ahead of the game so it's going to take them a minute to understand that as well it's the same thing going on over here yeah sorry Jumped yeah, right in no, there, absolutely. Sorry. I mean, so so if anybody's saying that Veronica was expensive, she wasn't expensive. That's what you pay Veronica, and you're lucky to pay Veronica that amount of money. Uh, but I would love it if if you know the the community of Game On could kind of make this last if, episode you know, just a the, real big uh-oh. tower <clears throat> for the. Yeah, no. Thank and thank you to everybody who 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 made Game On possible. And of course, uh, uh, while you were gone, Romney, we talked the hell up out of uh, on your movie. Anything besides the fact that it comes out on four twenty and people need to continue to harass your co-hosts? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to throw some stuff out at you really quick. I want to answer your first question. I didn't have a Twitter account until No Ordinary Family. And really? really? When I got to know what? Yeah, they made me get one. So, ah. so I mean, it's become. It, it, listen. My business partner, the person that, that I work and produce and, and, and curate material for, his name is, uh, well, that his name is irrelevant. The point of it is, is that this guy goes through about a billion dollars a year. And all of his investment partners, I kid you not, whenever we say, yeah, we're trying to put together a movie, they say who's in it. And when we say who, that, we say who when we, we tell them so-and-so or so-and-so, the first question out of every investor's mouth is, how many Twitter followers does he have? 
How many Twitter followers does she have? How many Facebook friends does she have? Yeah. That's what they want to know. Because in the, and also I'll throw another one at you. I've, you know, working with, um, with being on unsupervised with effects, we don't have a huge advertising budget. So instead what we do is we actually go around and, um, you know, we give, we, we, I give out material. Like I'll mail out screenplays that are signed by the cast. I'll mail out autographed posters. It doesn't matter. And we'll do all kinds of, you know, in, incentive games via the internet. Post a quote by Darius and, you know, and qualify to win this, blah, blah, blah. I'll give them people my text number, have people call me and give me their opinion of the show. And if they're honest, whether they like it or not, if they're honest, you know, I, I'll, I'll send them something. That kind of thing. Long and short of it is, is that we did a really major, like, online push for our eighth episode, it and it became our largest um, episode most to watched. date, most viewed episode to date. And they are completely convinced that those types of push uh, influence the you know viewership tremendously. So once upon a time, they said that oh you know Twitter didn't get people wouldn't put down Twitter to watch your show. Now it's kind of different, especially if you're engaging correctly. It really has a lot to do with the way in which you, you know, interact with people. So what I would say about Think Like a Man is it's the first time I've been involved in a movie where they've been so conscious of it. And if, as you know, come on, Taraji Henson, um, uh, Kevin Hart, Gabrielle Union, Jerry Ferrara, Gary Owen, Megan Good. In the social networking world, these people are somewhat gods in their own right. You know what I mean? If, sure. these, if these were, Greek, you know, Greek times, you know, you know, they, they would be some kind of goddesses, you know, <laughs> based on their their freaking follower or subscriberships or whatever. Yeah. So, um, collectively, we've been doing videos together and we've been putting them out. I've got, like I said, I interviewed the cast, and you know what? I tell you what I'm going to do. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you guys the link to the video that I just did. I'm going to post it right now. There's the link to the video that I did that I kid you not. If you search this video, the numbers aren't saying so. I posted it at midnight last night. It, it already has 27,000 views. And on World Star Hip Hop, it has more than 115,000 views. It's only been up for a day. I'm wow. not exaggerating. Yeah, the first thing I'm going to say. And then the second thing I'm going to say is there is a behind-the-scenes version of this where it gets really raw. I'm going to also yeah. post that. No one else has seen that. You have to have the right link to see it, but I'll post it to you. Yes. And that right, that you're seeing, yeah, I'm going to throw some backdoor action. No hair. No hair. It's nice and wax. I'm going to throw some backdoor action up there for y'all as well. <laughs> I just got to dig it up. Awesome. Um, yeah. Nice bleach. If there is any hair, it's bleached. It's non-obtrusive. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> okay. And, sure. Um, or maybe you could do something fun with it. You know, make it just like a like a red and blue kind of motif or something. <laughs> or maybe you can have shink, think like a man died into it. Opening April twentieth. Uh, theaters everywhere. <laughs> there you go. Well, you, I mean, you I'm know, just trying. Listen, I'm throwing it against the wall, seeing what sticks. I think uh, on that note, I think we got to wrap up this episode of NSFW. Thank you so much, Romney, for hanging with us. Thank you for staying up late. Uh, best of luck with the rest of the tour. You look like you want to say something. Yeah, man. Can I tell you? Yeah, go. I, I do. I'm, I don't want to go away just yet. Last thing. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry. Thanks to Google and Alchemy um, Network. No, seriously. Thanks to Google and Alchemy Networks, they actually helped me put together a show called Romney Meets His Friends. And what I do on this show is I basically travel all across the country. Um, I land in an airport and I just start contacting people in my social in my social network. What? From the, from the, I'm given a... a Yep, I'm given a car, I'm given a, a bicycle, and I'm given a pair of skates. And from the minute I contact you in my social network, you have an hour. We have an hour to spend. Oh, that's awesome. So you can awesome. meet me halfway. You can guide me to where you are. You can you, you can send a car for me. You can do whatever you think. You can tell me how to if, – if riding a bike is quicker than taking a car through traffic, you can guide me through that. But the long and short of it is I have an hour. It's called Romney Meets His Friends. It starts in the summer. And, like, I literally land in a different city every weekend and do are the same thing over now? and over. And here's what's the cool part. I get a cash prize for every guest – every person that I meet. And then that cash prize goes to the visit that I thought was the best. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, are, are you shooting it right now or, or is that yeah. that's coming up later? Like, like, oh, are you still going to production okay. in we go into production in May? Uh, dude, well, there we well, go. Then, well then, I guess you got to follow Romney. Absolutely. At Romney Malco. There you go. At Romney Malco to maybe be the guy that hangs out with Romney on the show. There we go. Now, now I'm playing the end of the show song. But maybe, maybe don't. 
Maybe you don't do Twitter, maybe you do Facebook, maybe some. Go to funnyblack.com. All my social networks are there. I learned that from Veronica. Just yeah. go to funnyblack.com, baby, and you'll see everything that you need to know about me. All right? You and, got and about before me. I go, I'll make sure to post that, that link that I promised. Dude, fantastic. Thanks again so much, Romney. Yes. No, thank you, guys. Die on a fire, kids. Thank you. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> Soon I discover. <laughs> um, well, this is not playing, this video here. It's just a frozen It did block. that last week, too. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I, I got to see what it is. Oh, wait. That's, it's good that, that we didn't go. Hold on. That's Tony, leave this in. Okay, we're, I'm we got to do this. The week I'm holding of on. April 9th, 2012. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. It's week three, and nothing came out. So practically nothing has changed. Let's go check the scoreboard. Veronica, Tom, Sarah, Brian. Third place, no movies. And with Wrath of the Titans bringing in $15 million this week, bringing his total to $58.8 million, it's I hate Justin you. Robert Young. And with Hunger Games it, bringing in $33.5 million this week, bringing his total to $302.8 million, it's Scott Johnson. And just like million. that, week three of the movie oh. draft is over. That is your movie draft minute for the week of April 9th, 2012. Awesome. Uh, hey, Romney, have you song, have you uh, heard of our our, our movie draft, our summer yeah. movie draft? Yeah, yeah. Do you know about our summer movie draft that we do? I don't. I okay, don't. so we it's Tell it's fantasy it. football, but for movies, we uh, we get uh, six people and we auction off the movies. You have a hundred virtual dollars, and then uh, in chat realm plays along at home. Let me show you this. So um, we have over a thousand people playing along from home. And uh, uh, here you can see, let me go ahead and move this over here. Uh, you can see the, what titles everybody bought with their, with their uh, monies. And then basically however much money it makes during the summer is uh, how much you guys, you know, how much your team makes. And then, um, oh, so right now we're way early in the summer. So everybody, everybody, first we all picked the movies that we wanted and we bought them at whatever price we could negotiate. But then based on those numbers, everybody in the chat realm was able to put together their own mini teams so that they could see how yeah. uh, they could play along. So uh, what's awesome is it just makes it to where the first thing you check every goddamn morning is box office mojo to see how your the movies yeah. you bought. And you find yourself rooting for movies that you wouldn't normally give a damn about. <laughs> Unfortunately, you nobody. I, we, we didn't. We yeah. didn't have think like a man in the draft. We should have think like a man in the draft. Yeah, we should have. That's gonna make a no. lot of money. I would. I would have spent. Think like a man. I would have had my my budget for that at probably. I would have spent twelve to fifteen dollars on Think Like a Man because I think it could do big. Yeah. I, I think it has the potential to do big myself. I will tell you though. You know, um, I, I've been told by publications, you know, that we've approached the press and stuff that they don't cover those kinds of movies. Um, and <laughs> those kinds I was like, of movies? I was like, oh, Movie? I was like, well, what is that? You know, what, what, is, what does that mean? But no, um, I have a funny feeling to think like a man is going to surprise a lot of people. And not only is it going to surprise a lot of people, I think that it's just going to be straight up entertaining. As can you, can you, can you, and can I you thank put you guys last, for me on uh, the, show. the publications that said they don't? Cover those kind of movies. Do you yeah, want to put on. that out there? Hey, yo, who was it? Spill it. Yo, yo, you see how big my eyes are right now? <laughs> that shit is not going to happen. That shit. But, 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 like you know, man, I'm really sorry about um, Game On because um, I really did, I really did think. Actually, you remember I was actually emailing you, um, Justin, and asking you yep. like if I could come back on the show. Mm -hmm. Remember? Oh yeah, no, definitely. I mean, Romney, I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. I think that there's, there's a really cool. Uh, yeah, I think me and Brian have always, you know, kind of felt that that you have you're you're a great fit on uh, in in this kind of thing, and and we, I know me and Brian are always, you know, I, whenever I see you know a commercial or something for like Think Like a Man, or I see it on on Twitter or something, I'm always like, oh cool, I'm like that guy knows my name, that's awesome. <laughs> But I'm like I'm like that for everything. It's like people that I went to college with when they you know they were like reporters and stuff for like the Washington Post. Uh, I always just I'm like a soccer man, mom with my friends. Like I just I'm so excited for everything that they do. But uh, it's always it always blows my mind that that you uh, you know dig NSFW and and the stuff that we do here. So I I really I really enjoy whenever you can be on the show and I try to you know for game on you know like again thinking about that idea I was like there's only one dude I got to call and that's right <laughs> yeah. well and, and, no, and 
uh, yeah, and as far as as far as you know, the future something good will will come of the game on experience. There's too much awesomeness and there's too much uh, fan interest for that to fizzle and, and go nowhere. You know. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, and if anything, like it, it definitely raised your clout ratio, man, because you guys pulled off some pretty miraculous stuff. And like, it just showing you that you guys are engineers. You guys, are, I mean, are pioneers in the game. You know how to make a show happen. You know how to make it work, and you know how to make the numbers soar. And then, of course, you got this great following. Chat realm is the bomb. I still, I still, and I'm going to say this. But you can't belt me because of the fact that it's not a curse word. <laughs> I'm going to spell it so that you guys know. Okay. I still fucks with. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, fux. 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 All right. <laughs> I still fucks with, with the dudes in the chat realm. I still, you know, I still holler at everybody in there. Um, privately, sometimes it's on, on the sidelines if they're trying to get hooked up. They're trying to put something together. I know somebody they can meet up with. So. You know, I, I dig I dig the crew, dude, and we sh- we just we should keep building and keep building, and before you know it, we'll be sitting on our own little country. How about them apples? Yeah. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Is is you know, I mean, I think the the goal is, and especially with the whole game on thing, what was beautiful to me about what happened last night and today is just that, like, you know, I, I you you kind of realize that the lesson of the internet isn't about getting on to another platform and like, and then you become big. And then for some reason you have this audience that is way larger. Cause a lot of times, I mean, a larger audience is good and it's always good to kind of get out to new people, but like, you know, it's cool to have the fan base that can, that can make it happen in, in house and you can be yourself and you can express what you want to say. And you can just have that, that freedom and that artistic kind of leeway to, to say things that are, are awesome. And, and it's like, it's what I love about the fact that you're, you're, kind of down with the show is that if you were just on the show and you had just kind of known about it, I, I would, I would never ask you about the love guru. Like I would just, I would be like, like he's going to, he's going to hate the show. He's going to hate me. I've asked him about this show that, you know, just bombed to the box I office and everything. Know, I, but, hate, I hate that friggin' the, the politics of that, like editing. That's the thing. Like my whole cast, my producers, everybody gets nervous when we do shows, we do radio interviews, we do TV interviews. They're like, what is that dude going to say? Because my temperament, I'm so much more conditioned to this type of entertainment and this yeah. type of information. And, you know, and, and I honestly believe it's the future. It's like there's no well, way in the world that we're going to continue to take. Like, remember when they were making those commercials um, after BP had that spill and they were yeah. making those commercials? Everything's OK now. Never mind the oily black children in the background. <laughs> right. Yeah. I clean them off. You know. Like, I mean, seriously, how much longer are we going to take that? Sh- how much longer are we going to take like corporate driven, you know, propaganda as news? I mean, damn, I mean, this has got to be the future. And like, I believe like this, the more transparent at the end of the day, it might, you know, the more transparent, the more entertaining. That's what I sincerely believe. What? The more, tra- you know, the more relatable. The well, more yeah, and people the more respond discussed. and they always have to humanity. They respond to, you well, know, uh, to authenticity, especially instinct. on the on the internet. The internet can smell fake a mile away, and I think that's part of the reason you see these big flops uh, for, with social media directives, where it's like they try to they try to stick to corporate messaging or or whatever. Oh, I'm sorry, I got to manage my warehouse. Um, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> That's what you can have, folks. If you just go see Think Like a Man, your very own P warehouse. Uh, but Come it, on down to P warehouse where we have no. all the finest pussies that you could possibly ask for. I counted twelve. Pussies. How many pussies did you guys count? I counted twelve. I think if you actually just relax your eyes while you stare at the pussies, there's yet another bigger pussy that emerges. Oh, you know what? That's interesting. It's like the thing. You know, here's what I love about pink, particularly. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that no? Seriously, like pink. Seriously, pink have this way of being much more inviting. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. yeah. To, like, what? Well, I mean, and also it's like you know they kind of just go with anything. You know, you could put a little, uh, put some some drapes around them, or you know, you yeah. can just uh, they just wander around and get into mischief, and you're like, what are you doing? Exactly. And I've you know I you know I I don't I know if you guys know this or not, but like one of the things I learned from my veterinarian, like it's better to feed, um. It's better to feed raw meat. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people don't think so, maybe, but you know, uh, but you, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't mix up, you know, maybe a zucchini or a carrot or uh, you know, maybe a fig because, here and again. No, you're absolutely right, but you know, predominantly, you know, my at least, you know, any that comes around here that you know, because we have a lot of strays. <laughs> sure. um, you know, 
that it comes around here, I just pretty much give them raw meat. And I mean, you, know, you guys are on the road. You know, you're on the road doing this this tour. You're a big, recognizable movie star. I'm sure that there's tons of strays just just wandering around. You and the rest of the cast of Think Like a Man as you go uh, from from down to town. And sometimes you gotta you gotta uh, do your duty as a humanitarian. No, you know what? I'll tell you the honest to God truth. I don't. I, I don't. I don't do it. It's not my thing. And like for a number of reasons. Like, I mean, come on, man. Look at OJ. You know what I'm saying? I I'm not look. I'm not getting caught up in those are some really nice. Okay, all right. Look, we got. <laughs> hey, we got it. We got it. We got to do intros and name this episode. Okay. okay. So so look, I'm just going. I'm just going to drop this last bomb, and I'm going to say this. Drop right. the bomb. I know you guys want some more unsupervised. It's coming. We got three more bonus episodes for you coming shortly. Woo! And I also know that if there's, I know that there. Look, I'm telling you, I know for a fact that when you go to see. Look, it's the highest testing movie in the history of the friggin' of Sony. Uh, like, no one's ever tested as high as we have tested at Sony. Yeah, eat both, Spider Man. Think like <laughs> a man. That's what like Sony's thinking of. April twentieth. I'll see you there. <laughs> and if you want to be a part of my show, Romney meets his friends. Just go to funnyblack.com and connect with me through one of those social networks, and this we is... will do this. Big Dude, shout out to, to Brian. Big shout out to Justin. What's up? What's up, baby? You uh, better come down to South Florida. You meet your friends. I don't care. You ain't gonna meet me. I just want to just come down to South Florida. Meet you have meet your meet Gabrielle. Gabrielle's down here. You know. You know what? You know what I'll do. I'll tell you what. I'll hit you up as soon as I get down there because I'm not literally. I'll hit you guys up as soon as I get. I'd love to come sit in the studio. Um, you know, my my family lives in Florida. It's just that I moved to New York. I don't know if I told you that I moved back to Brooklyn because I couldn't I couldn't handle L.A. anymore and didn't think that I needed to. And so now that I'm in New York, I'm closer to Florida. I'm back and forth. So when I get in there, I'll let you oh. know. All right, dude. Half, uh, half of Florida is New York, especially South Florida. All right, are we gonna read the ads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got to do. Uh, um, and yeah, the tease. You got tease. In this week's episode of Game wait, On. Wait, wait. Sorry, are... I, I was, I, I was. Uh, you couldn't hear it because it ducked out. I swear out. to God, you keep effing around. I'm gonna put you in the warehouse real quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, hey, can I, can I go? <laughs> All right. On this episode of Game On, we are joined by Romany Malco, folks. 40-year-old virgin, weeds, no ordinary family, and of course, the new film, Think Like a Man, coming out April 20th. Listen, this one is one you don't want to miss. We get all into every, no subject is off topic. This intro's rambling. I'm going to do another one. Well, especially because did you say this episode of Game On? Oh, F my <laughs> butt. In fact, you know what? That's it. That's we're, We'll roll it with that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. That'll be a good oh, intro. Oh, here we go. All right. No, Thanks. let's run with that. All right. No, I have to actually say the stuff that happens in the episode. On this episode of Game... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> that show's canceled. But NSFW isn't because we have Romney Malco. He talks about his new film, Think Like a Man. We talk about the love guru and everything else possibly under the sun. Also, we talk about our canceled show, Game On. Oh, did I bring up Game On again? That's so Game On of me. It's <laughs> all going up on NSFW show. Why y'all y'all make fun of the game on? <laughs> yes, <laughs> finally! God damn, we should have had you come on. As the, we made that joke forever that it's our it's our our, our Jamaican uh, gay interest podcast. Game uh, on! We even had a theme song. It went game on, game on, game on. Come and the rolls over goes to sleep. <laughs> gay. He's a gay, he's a gay, he's a gay mom. <laughs> we should have had you come on as the gay mom. That would have been, oh, God damn it. That's a really funny idea. I real happy, man. I happy. I, I a gay man today. I real happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if we come back, the first Yo, scene. Web, web, sorry, Web 5506. You from the Caribbean? My family's Trinidadian. Let me see. So, hey, what part, what, what part of the island are you from, boy? Wow. What, what kind of what, what, where where are you from? What part? You're not Trinidad. Is that Trini? Where in Trinidad? It happened at the place in Trinidad. Where is the place in Trinidad? Yeah, Los Ciro, yeah, Lavantil, yeah, down south. You're some South Sando. I have people in Sando. I have people in Coquille. I have people right there in Coquille. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. Where, where, where are you going, boy? I have people. I have people in Coquille. Yeah, no, I have people in Port of Spain. I have people. I have people in in Point Fourteen. 
Ah, people. Oui. Vesta, hey, Vesta Bella Boy, I found me in Vesta Bella Boy. Hey, I have mm. people, hey, you know, I have people quite from Toko down to Los Ciro, you know. This went from zero to Trinidadian public access it's in like four amazing. I, 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 I go sign out because I can't shut up and all that work to do. But hey, web, I, I go say five, five, not six. Web, five, five, not six. You know. This I is amazing. Again. I go catch you again. That's the thing people don't understand is that when I tell all about this, this one of the greatest show on the planet, but all you're catching on yet, I go, all you're going to find out. When it grew up and win Grammy and all kind of thing, Olego want to come back and say Olego was watching the playing NSFW show and the game man show, but Olego find out. Olego leave the game man alone, eh? All right, I sign it out. I'm wow, gone. that was amazing. Drops the mic, and I'm Drops proud the mic. to be an American.